Will mankind be wiped out by a huge space rock, just like the dinosaurs? How much do we understand about asteroids? What exactly is the risk? In the words of Dr. Brian May, one of my favorite musicians and co-founder of Asteroid Day, it's one day each year to learn about asteroids, the origins of our universe, and to support the resources necessary to see, track, and deflect dangerous asteroids from Earth's orbital path. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, on Asteroid Day, which is June 30th, which is the, as you know, the uh, anniversary of the Tunguska explosion in 1908, where a 45 meter asteroid hit the Earth's atmosphere, releasing enough energy to destroy roughly 800 square miles. And that is what the B612 Foundation was founded to prevent. What we have demonstrated is that the combination of an infrared space telescope like Sentinel in combination with the LSST, which as we mentioned, is going to be online in just a few years, is quite powerful. But I want to touch on uh, the B612 Sentinel Space Telescope. And originally NASA supported their mission. And in fact, they signed a space act agreement between the two, but that was ripped up. And only days later, I think you'll confirm, NASA announced that they'd be funding their own space telescope. Is that NeoCam? Uh, remarkably similar to Sentinels. <laughs> I mean, if you go back to when, and you know, the, the guys at B612 are great. They had a great idea, yeah. and <clears throat> they got NASA to, to agree to do this. And then after a while, uh, the guys at JPL who wanted to do this had their own competing proposal. They said, "Yeah, we want to do this." Of course, they wanted a lot of money directly from NASA. B612 guys just wanted technical assistance. They were going to raise their own money. Yeah. So after a while, the JPL guys, you know, they wanted they wanted their you know NeoCam. And so, by some strange coincidence, NASA went to the fine print on the Space Act Agreement and said, well, you know, you haven't done this, you haven't done that yet. And instead of giving these guys a chance, because pretty much they were going to give NASA the spacecraft and operate it for yeah. next to nothing in terms of what NASA would have to pay. But internal politics, the JPL, they wanted that responsibility and the money that went with it. So the Space Act Agreement got torn up on a technicality and shazam, a day or two later, uh, suddenly NeoCam gets picked. It was not a coincidence. You know, asteroids are something that we've known about scientifically for over 200 years now. And I think the earliest ideas uh, that asteroids would represent a resource uh, to humanity and to society uh, is over 100 years ago with Konstantin Tsiolkovsky described it uh, in one of his early writings. Uh, we've certainly seen the science advance. Uh, we've seen science fiction advance around it. Um, and really, it's just been in the last uh, few decades with uh, the survey activities that have dramatically increased our knowledge with the space missions that have not only flown past but uh, orbited, landed on, yeah. and even returned samples from asteroids. It's something now that is is very much a science and uh, really what we see is an inevitability of moving into space and being able to use those resources that are out there to allow us to make that foothold. We, uh, we started this company about six years ago and with the idea that if you didn't have to bring everything from the surface of Earth into space, you could do a lot more in space. Yeah. And the idea of space manufacturing um, became a reality when we put 3D printers on the International Space Station and started manufacturing the first things ever built off of planet Earth. So, uh, so we're really interested in creating um, a, a new age for space where you don't have to build things that have to survive launch. They don't have to exist in gravity. Maybe they only live in zero gravity and they're so big they would never have fit into a rocket to begin with. I mean, so they're, they're, they're some of the most beautiful objects that we can see in the sky, Bob, but potentially the most dangerous to life on Earth as well. Bob, what about other places? that may have friendly conditions, that may have water, and which have been pelted by comets, such as Europa, the uh, second yeah. Jovian moon outward from Jupiter. Uh, wouldn't it be, make it more likely than not that there's life there if they have warm saltwater oceans, plus comet impacts, they've had as many as we have, plus all the amino acids that these comets bring, so bearers of death and, and bearers of life.